Hey guys, JC Smith here. Well, it's Monday here. The weather's nice, the sun's shining. It's a little chilly yet. I don't know what the temperature is, but um, not quite not quite up to where we'd like to be, but it's close enough. So we're out taking full advantage of it. Today we're working on this. This is a 2012, I think. 11 or 12, I don't remember now. Um, F-250, it's a extended cab short bed. I got this truck out of the south, and uh, I just had it delivered. Um, I think it came last Friday, I think it was. And I haven't had a chance to get to it because I had other stuff going on and need to get done. So here's what we're going to do. This truck has tons and tons and tons of aftermarket wiring on it. It's got crap upon crap upon crap. And the only way to get all this stuff out the way I want it out is to take the dash apart or take the interior apart. And I'll show you why. Some of this runs underneath the carpet, which we've already pulled out. You can see my wife's cleaning up the dirty mess over there from where the uh, crap gets down between the sill plate. Pretty common yeah. occurrence on a Super Duty. It's wet. And it's wet. So if you guys got a Super Duty, that sill plate over there, you want to make sure you take it out every now and then and vacuum that thing out because it just holds dirt and moisture and it'll rot away right there and then get down into your rockers. So here's what we got. Here's the beginnings. This has been cut out, but we wanted to get everything. And there was a bunch of stuff back here and <clears throat> excuse me, it was all mounted in the back seat. So we wanted to get all the wiring out, get it back to factory, and then we got the sun's not working our favor, but you can see all that wiring underneath there. I want to remove all that. That's all uh, uh, communications wiring for their uh, the radio they had in it. And it also has a satellite tracker on this truck, which as soon as you turn the key on, it pings every so often. So we're going to remove all that stuff. Had a cell phone holder up on the dash. We're going to take that out, get it back to factory. And uh, we've removed the seats. The one seat was torn and it's probably not a very expensive fix but i think i'm just going to swap seats out because i have another set that uh are in good shape and i'll just sell them i don't know if you can see them over here the three of them i got them leaning against the skid steer so this is our this is our project for the day it's dirty a lot of times this is how the trucks come when i buy them and then my wife will do her you know fantastic deal and it'll look like a new one when we're done um these door panels are dirty and filthy and I guess they're not horrible but uh, she'll have them clean you'll never know it was dirty she'll get uh, she'll get everything cleaned up so I guess I better get to work what are you doing lady cleaning what are you driving these days uh, nothing how come because uh, we sold my van you still upset <clears throat> Yeah, kinda. But didn't you tell me you wanted to sell it before we bought you another one? Yeah. But I'm you changed your mind, didn't tell very, me? I'm not very good at making decisions. But you changed your mind and didn't tell me that you wanted to keep it. And yeah. then I sold it. Because I changed my mind a little too late <laughs> when they were here to look at it. It set in when you started taking your stuff out of it. No, it set in when you said, come and get your stuff out. I'm like, oh, no. Remember when I said, maybe we should look for you a van? And you said, I think we should sell mine first. Well, I wanted to make sure we could sell it to, to get a different one. I don't want to end up with two. Again. Again. Yeah. Oh, well. It's not the end of the world. So, uh. Like you say, they make them every day. They make them every day. Hey. We had that thing for a couple years, and we got all of our money back after driving it. And that includes all the maintenance I put into it. We got all that money back. So you had a free vehicle for a few years. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Is this going to be your new temporary buggy? Maybe. It's a pretty nice little truck. It'll be even nicer when you're done cleaning. Yeah, it's pretty gross. No. This is her idea of a deep clean. The whole interior is out of it. Nah, that's not why we took it out. There was a bunch of wiring in it from aftermarket stuff that I wouldn't take out. And uh, it's all laying right here. This is all the crap that was under the hood and 
run under the dash and all over the truck and to lights and stuff like that. And she wants to clean it up nice. Because this might be the temporary wheels for her until I buy something. Until I find just the right one. Because we're not looking to just go to a dealer and buy a van. No, we don't do that. No, no. What are we going to do? We're going to find a steal. Mm -hmm. We're going to find a super deal just like what you had before. Drive it for a few years and when we sell it, we get all of our money back, including all the money we put in maintenance. Now, you don't get your gas and your insurance back, but that's an expense I'm willing to have. Willing to absorb, I guess. How about you? I guess. I guess so. All right, we'll get back to work. Today we're headed out of town. Um, we're going to go check out this truck. It's, uh, it's not a pickup truck. Um, I bought it and I was told by the company that owns it, it needs a fuel pump. Well, the type of engine that it is, a fuel pump is not an easy proposition. It's, uh, it's a little bit of investment and it's a little bit of time to do it. Well, before I go and pay the money to have the truck towed in, because it's, it's a good amount of money to get it towed because of what it is, how big it is. Um, so before I do that, I want to go up, I want to see if it will crank over, I want to know what the motor sounds like, I want to see if it will start or run at all so I can make a better assessment of the truck before I invest any more money. So here's what we're doing. We're gonna, I'm taking my essentials. Uh, I'm taking jumper cables. These are number four welding cable on these good heavy clamps. I got my travel box here, which you wouldn't believe how many tools I have crammed in this box. We'll talk about that some other day. And I got three batteries. Now if you notice, these are what's called Group 31 truck batteries, um, because this is not a pickup that we're going to look at. It's a uh, international box truck. It's a 24 foot box. Um, it's got good, mo real low miles on it, so um, we're going to head up and see if we can get it started today and get a better assessment of the truck. And we're going to drive this truck. We just got this the other day. We got this one in from Oklahoma. Um, my, my wife just got it all cleaned up. So it's a 2000 and, uh, what is it, 11? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, 2011 F 250 extended cab. Um, it's a two wheel drive gas truck. It's got uh, the 6.2 gas, which I really, really like that engine. It's got some dents, and let's see if I can get that sun out of there for you. It's got some dents and scratches like you expect on a work truck, but quite honestly, I could care less. Look at the tires that came on it. Not gonna show up. Let's see. How about that? That's some deep tread. So it's a pretty cool little truck, and uh, this is what we're gonna drive for a little while. You know, this will be our puddle jumper, errand truck, whatever, for a little while. So, all right, let's get on our way. All right, guys, we're getting close. Um, getting close to where the truck's at. We're going to uh, run in here, and I'm almost positive the battery's are dead, so we're gonna, real quick, we're gonna check them. If they are dead, we're gonna rip them out. We're gonna put batteries in it. Um, see what uh, what we can do. Um, I'm gonna get some, uh, I don't know if I get video or pictures or whatever the truck, but uh, it's an 08 International 4300. It's a 24 foot box truck with lift gate. Pretty popular truck, um, pretty highly sought after. Um, not so much for the engine that's in it. It's a Max 47, which is not one of the most popular engines. Well, it is popular, but uh, it's not the one everybody wants. I mean, most people would like the DT Max Force instead, the DT 466. So anyways, we're getting close. We get up here, I'll get you some pictures, and hopefully we'll get you some video of it running. If we, if we can get it running, and uh, we'll bring you along. We'll try it again. It, it runs, but it runs out of fuel. So, I got video of it running. We got there, all the batteries were dead, uh, and they're not that old. So I took all the batteries out, I put batteries back in it, and uh, we cranked it, and it cranked for a little while, 
and then it tried to start, and we kept cycling the key, trying to build fuel pressure, and uh, it finally did fire off. It would run for maybe 10 or 15 seconds, uh, and then it would just kind of, uh, the RPMs would just slowly fall off like it ran out of fuel. <clears throat> so, I'm fairly confident it's a fuel issue, whether, I mean, I, I think it's a fuel pressure issue. Um, that truck has uh, a common problem with the fuel pumps. It's, uh, it's a high pressure fuel pump, <clears throat> and in that truck what happens is, if you get a little bit of water in the fuel, it destroys that high pressure fuel pump. It, uh, it just comes apart, and when it does, it sends shrapnel all through the injectors. Um, but the good thing was, it would fire, and when it started to run, it ran smooth, didn't it? It was pretty smooth. So uh, it sounded it sounded good, it sounded smooth, it just wouldn't run long enough to really make any, you know, 100% confirmation that everything's okay. So uh, I'm pretty confident though, I think I think it might just need a fuel pump, a high pressure fuel pump, which, you know, that's a, that's a few thousand dollar repair, but in the big scheme of things, you know, I bought the truck, it's a 2008, we just had 100,000 miles, and uh, that truck's probably, in my area, that truck's worth, I'm gonna say high teens, 20,000, somewhere in that, around there. Um, and I've already had a, a couple people that I know get a hold of me, they're interested in buying the truck just the way it is. They don't They don't want me to fix it, because they know what happens. If you fix it, well, now the value's much, much, much more. So, uh, one guy that was interested in it, um, before I, before we actually hit the record button, um, he called, I sent him a video of it running, and, and he said, yeah, I'll take it. So I thought I was going to have this great video where I was going to show you how to, how we repair that truck, but um, unfortunately, um, tentatively, it's sold. You know, he, he's going to, he's going to send me a check and uh, all that kind of stuff. So if he sends a check and the check's good, then it's a sold truck. If not, we might have a video, but I'm pretty confident that it's going to be sold. But uh, which is good. I mean, that's a that's a good quick flip for me. I could, you know, take that money and invest into something else, which is what I'd like to do. Um, I've got a couple other things I'm looking at, so um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, if he doesn't follow through, um, I'll get the truck towed in, and we'll get repairing on the high pressure fuel pump. But uh, at this point, I'm going to tell you it's a it's a closed closed chapter. It's over, and that that truck's probably probably not going to see that truck so anyways if you guys like what we're doing give us that thumbs up if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and what do you say lady leave your comments below please please and there you have it all right guys catch you on the next one